Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today I want to show you a walkthrough video on my latest hip hop track. Now this hip hop track, I was going to upload it to certain stock music libraries, but I just got a TV brief for a TV show. Well, it's a TV brief for a TV show, obviously. And they're asking for some hip hop music tracks and I'm thinking I'm going to upload this track. And if it's not this particular track, I will do um, a, something similar for that brief. I'm working with a sync library right now and they send me briefs from time to time. And a fellow composer who happens to be part of this uh, library is, um, you know, composing music as well there. And, you know, uh, we're always in, in touch and, and talking about the emails that we get in the brief. And he's has already submitted a couple of hip hop tracks. And um, I'm a little bit behind because usually these briefs have a, a tight de deadline, if you will. So I should either upload this one or a new one. But I want to walk you through very quickly on uh, what I'm using here and how I compose this particular track and, and what are the elements really. Again, uh, I might disappoint you a little bit with this particular track because I'm using a lot of Apple Loop. So don't expect to see any fancy plugins here. So let me play you a little bit of the track and then we'll dissect what's going on here. Okay, you get the idea. I'm not gonna play you the whole thing because it's quite repetitive and that's, that's the whole point of this track anyways. Uh, the ending, however, it finishes like this. I wanna walk you through, through the ending very quickly. <laughs> Okay, I was very tempted to just leave the ending like this. And just like that, and just let it fade out because I really like that, you know, like declining of every, of every four bars or so of this, this little piece. Uh, but in music licensing, usually people want, or video editors and, and, and whatnot, they want a, a, a well-defined bottom ending, okay? So what, what I mean by that is that they want to know exactly where the last musical hit is. So I'm always conscious of that, okay? Now I could do two different endings for this particular track, but I wanted to craft something that is well-defined, like for example this, okay? Because at the end of the day, those pianos and those accents are everywhere in, in every single bar, right? That, those piano, and I've talked about this on my video when, when I first shared this with you guys, this particular track in conjunction with another track that I was composing that day. Uh, follow me here on the channel so you can keep up with all the videos that I'm doing because I'm releasing videos every single day, sharing composition, sharing my income, sharing everything that I'm doing as a stock music composer. Okay, so I wanna show you how I have composed this track and I'm just gonna lock myself here in a loop because that's how I compose. I compose on a loop, so meaning that I start with a few elements and then I start to stack them down. So I wanna show you first the drums and this is just, you know, whatever comes here with logic. I mean, if you have Cubase or Pro Tools or whatever, you can use something similar. Okay, so this is what I have. Okay, so I start with a beat like that, then something different. Okay, so all together. So 
classic drum loop, classic uh, hip hop beat, or beat okay? Uh, some percussions. And of course you got your bass. And that's how I'm trying to compose the track as I'm trying to come up with like this uh, hip hop type of vibes going on, all right? So I got, okay, I know exactly what note I'm in or what key I'm in based on the bass that I got, right? And, and again, keeping in mind that I'm using a lot of Apple loops. I mean, this is nothing else, all right? And obviously I chopped them off. I tried to make them work in different ways. A lot of people are asking like, oh, what's up, any, any issues with copyright by using loops? And I'm gonna make a video, a separate video about this because hey, nowadays you can buy samples, loops, and you can create a full blown track like that. But the trick is that you need to edit the loops and you need to alter certain parts. So for example, in these drums, you know, even though it's a loop, I can go inside and really edit certain beats and stuff so I can make it my own. Uh, but there's certainly ways that you can do this without getting into problems with copyright. But anyways, when you upload to a library, uh, you're supposed to have the permission and uh, from the samples that you're getting, which you can release music by using your loops, okay? And, uh, you know, there's so many, uh, you know, uh, uh, companies out there selling loops. They specialize on loops for you composers to use, okay? And you can just build a track out of that loop, and then it's up to you to just decide which parts are you going to keep and what not. So the next one is a piano. Let me isolate that. Okay, so you can see it's like a reverse piano, so I like that. Uh, the next thing here, I try to uh, uh, add some guitar. This is, this is the, I really enjoy this guitar. I mean, listen to this. This is like the main beat or like the main uh, hook, if you will. Like, this is an essential part of this track. Because this thing happens at the end of every bar. I don't remember what, if this is like a whole loop. No, it's not. It's just a particular section of a loop. Uh, but, you know, what I like to do is just grab certain things and then either emphasize more on them or chop them off and then cut them off and then make my own version of, of, a, of a track based on those loops, okay? And if it fits, it fits. If it doesn't fit, then, you know, I get rid of that. So you can see I have there here another piano or yeah, whatever it is here. Uh, but that track is empty, right? I tend to do that quite a lot. There's another one here at the bottom. So I have certain things that I have opened up or that I have created. And I do that even when I'm playing guitar. I have all of these tracks that I'm starting to stack things on top of each other. And then I have one, I say like, oh, one more, right? Like just maybe can record another guitar track and then the track will be empty. So when I'm done with the track and I say like, I'm, I'm pretty done, I will have like one or two tracks which they're ready to go, but I haven't composed anything. Okay, so this is an example here with this piano and, and this one here, which you know, in theory I should delete anyways. Okay, um, but that guitar part is really important. Okay, so, so far, what I will have, and it's really aesthetic. And probably what I will do here, just to give you a quick example, this last note here on the piano, I will probably chop that off. So I will do something like this instead. So it goes like this. All right, and that's, that's how I work with loops. The reason why is because here, I don't want this node to interfere with this section, which is really important. So I wanna create as much space for this to happen. Okay, so that's something that I will do. As I am listening to this, I say, I don't need that last note. It might be like a simple detail, but it goes a long way. So after that, let me lock myself here in the loop. Obviously, I will have to do that for every single part where this piano is happening, right? I'm just going to do it here on the fly. 
like I said, so do you like to do like a little fade out just to avoid any type of pops? I can always double check that later on. Uh, the next uh, section here is this instrument. It's a loop again. Let me just undo this like this. Whatever that is. Okay. And it's cut. Did I did the same thing with this? No, that's, that's the way it is with this particular one as well. Okay. So that works really well with this. Right. And, and obviously, I have added the Valhalla here to the piano, the, the one that we were doing just right before. So there's a lot of atmosphere here. This one, I just left it as it is. After that, I have this type of guitars. So it slowly starts to build in, like build up this track. The next one, I, I, again, I'm on the fly going like very quickly, like just grabbing some loops and just literally chop them off, cut them off, and then see how they fit and try to like really uh, see how they all fit together as a, as a one big puzzle, okay? Okay, so this is another example of another loop that I have just grabbed. I mean, this is probably a bigger loop. No, it's not. Okay, so that's a loop. And what I did is that I just, uh, you know, copy and then kill it off here for this section to live. You see what I mean? So I, I, will li I like to do that with the loops. Uh, another example of that is here, the piano. This piano, for example. Right, and then again on the bar, next bar. So this one, it should be a much bigger, no, but let me just, it's a whole loop, right, uh, of a piano piece, but I cut it off and then just chop them off and then put them somewhere else and make it part uh, of the composition. Uh, the same with this. All right, uh, what is this here? And I fade it out to give space for that that thing that I'm that I'm creating with this guitar part here, right? So um, the next thing, is something, some loop here. I don't know what this is. I mean, it's like a minor thing. I don't know exactly what this is, but it's a full loop of something. Uh, I just grab a section of it, and just for some reason, it just makes sense to me. Uh, and it's just pretty aesthetic, really. Uh, obviously, when you start to stack all of this up, even without the drums, uh, so it all starts to make sense. Obviously, this happens before the piano. So I'm, I'm trying to, it's not just randomness, even though it might seem like it's random pieces together. Uh, this last thing happens before the next bar where the piano kicks in, okay? Like this, these two things here. Okay, so uh, the next part is this one. put a little bit of Valhalla there as well. This is probably a bigger loop as well that I have chopped off somehow. Yeah. Uh, and it just uh, random, it's not even on the grid. I'm just like whacking it in there and hopefully it will make sense. But obviously as I am listening to the track and the parts, you know. Sorry, from here. So as I am adding all of these things, I'm, I'm working in relationship to the last uh, loop that I added. So these two work really well. Mm -hmm. 
So in, in reality, I'm making like one loop. I can do like a stem of those two tracks because that's, that's what I was trying to create. Like one complements the other and it's kind of like a build up. One does not work without the other. I mean, it sounds cool, but with this one, Right, so that's, that's my thought process. And I have some broken records here. I don't know what this is. Let me just double check on that. So obviously broken records, chop or whatever, is not here in the beginning of this bar. Okay. And that's like building up to the final thing of this guitar here, right? So it's like. And then finally I have this other broken records, whatever this is. It has like a bass built in, you know, but it makes sense in the composition. I'm not, I don't even know if it's in the right key or not. Let me just double check. All right, that could be a stem right there. So the, like, the way I like to compose music is like that. Like I just, I can solo certain parts and then see if they fit. You know? Create like a stem or a bad version, if you will. But it's just a matter of making the pieces fit and obviously trying to get like an intro going as well. I mean, the intro could be anything really. You know, as I'm doing it like this, I'm very tempted to not have the drums in the beginning. And at the moment, this track just starts like this. And just because I think that it's a good foundation for, for what the listener needs to expect, right? I, you know, it's a hip hop track, so I want it to be hard hitting from the get go. But it's really aesthetic. I like the textures. I like all of this lo-fi sounds and all of this dirt and, and stuff. So, uh, but it's just a matter of, of making the pieces and the loops work together. Now, I could add a guitar there. I was very tempted to just add a guitar, but I was on the go, like really, like really fast, just like throwing different loops and chopping them off and try to create this aesthetic uh, track. Now, this is how I compose even corporate music. Go and watch the other videos, you know? Obviously, corporate music or any type of other music who has a little bit more structure in terms of melody and, and chord progression is a, is a different uh, ball game altogether, but it's kind of like the same principle. How can I make a melody fit and complement the chord progression and, and the key that I'm in, and how can I have uh, less elements than I think is needed? And, and with this, it's a particular good exercise. This particular track is a good exercise because it's so much. And, and I'm always interested in see like, okay, maybe this note, I can just get it, get it away from there. Like the way I did with one of those notes there. So my job is always to see how much more can I take away after I have added all of this. And always like, okay, how can this emphasize more this section of the composition? How can this note or this motif emphasize more on the messaging? of this particular track. So that's always the trick. I mean, as I am looking at this, I feel very tempting to just go and see what else can I take away and, and say, is that really needed? Okay, and, and that's a hard question to ask uh, as a composer because at times it, it's not needed. Most of the times it's not needed. You don't need that much. I mean, this is like a lot of tracks, uh, but they're just different loops so they all seem to work together. And my job is just to make sure they're in the same key. Hopefully it sounds in tune and then make, make sense out of it, you know? I mean, there's certain things that they can be a track on its own. They could certainly be a, a separate composition altogether. Uh, but, you know, I, I try to create as much as possible when it comes down to all of these different elements and then uh, learn to 
to stop and say like that's it i mean there's nothing else i can add to it anyways this is just a quick rundown of how i compose this particular music track my friend like i said i'm thinking about maybe submitting this music track to the sync library that i'm working with uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to do that if i do that it's going to be an exclusive track meaning that i'm not going to be able to upload this to uh, other libraries um, and if it's going to be exclusive i'm not even sure that i should actually even share it here with you on youtube but never mind you know it's my music at the end of the day but i will certainly compose uh, more hip-hop tracks maybe for that brief and maybe i will upload this to the royalty free libraries um, that i'm part of if you want to know about the libraries here's the guide download the guide link in the description with all the libraries where i'm selling my music new libraries that i have just recently joined and i'm uploading music music tracks just like this one in order to uh, license my music and earn money with my music. Thank you so much for all the love and support, my friend, and I'll see you in another video.